Nice, nice. Uh, so we back at it. Um, yeah. What up, everybody? It's a long story short show. This is episode eighteen of the Comic World for You, where we talk about the comics that came out this week, February sixth, two thousand nine. So if you like to talk about comics, anything like that, follow us at Long Story Short Show or follow us over at the Purple Channel because we just found out if we say the word, uh, we get lower in the search. So follow us over there at S Squad Up. So uh, I guess we'll just start right now. Uh, I want to start with Daredevil number one by Chip Zdarsky and like the other guy's name. There's a different inker and an artist. There's Mark Chichetto and Sonny Go. So... Um, what we're doing is we're starting off right after, uh, you know, he was in the mm-hmm. hospital, hospital. He just got out the hospital. So what's he doing? It's a couple weeks in the future and he's in a bar right now. Um, he's talking to some girl. She looks over at him and she's like, oh shit, you're blind. I didn't even notice you were blind. And, um, he's like, got some pills. And she's like, can I have some of those pills? Why do you even have pills? He's like, oh, it's because I just got out of an accident. She's like, oh, dope. Can I have one? And he's like, no, you can't have one. That's illegal. You're like, okay. <laughs> so it goes to him in the past, and you're That's basically, bad. like, dealing with the fact that, like, Matt's always had, like, this, like, rage in him, and he's always, like, sought after, like, you know, fighting people. Like, he's yeah. always looked for fights. And so it's like you go to him as a kid where he's looking for fights. You come to him as an adult when he's back out there, and he's getting real sloppy because he wasn't even ready. It's only been a couple <laughs> weeks since, he, since he's been recovered. I know. He just, like, jumped out a window. Yeah, so <laughs> it's like he's, like, fucking missing ledges and stuff like that, and he's, like, justifying it to himself. Like, oh, no, it's okay. It's okay. It's, it's, I, I got to run out in front of everybody let them know I'm still here. Like, people will see me, and they'll know I'm here, and this is good. This is a good thing. So it's like he's an addict, but it's like for like fighting crime and stuff like that. Okay. Well, hurting people is basically what it is. And um, it just comes down to there's a lot that goes into it. It's like Chip Zdarsky's first issue. So it's really like about him and his like conflicts with God and if he's even fighting for like the right thing or if he's just fighting to make himself feel better. But uh, it ends in most he's, likely. Yeah. And he's not ready. Like he's not ready to go out there yet. He's. um. Some people are, like, robbing, like, it's a small-time robbery in, like, some corner store, like, bodega or something like that. Okay. And um, he finds them. Yeah, that's and he's supposed like, to be okay. Easy Street. Yeah. And he finds them, and he's basically like, okay, I could take these people out. Uh, a fire starts. Like, he, <laughs> like, he messes up during the fight, and, like, they get him to the ground, and he's, like, trying to, like, fight his way up to the, up and everything. And it turns around, like, he gets beat so bad, like, he has to, like, barely even get away from the cops. Oh. And he's, like, on the top of a building, like, damn, like, how that even happened? He's, okay, let me go home. Um, there's uh, another cop. They got, like, a new cop. He's from Chicago. Um, he's real cool. He's real by the books. And he's, like, no, nah, this daredevil does this shit because he wants to, not because it's, like, the right thing to do. He's just, this is some sick dude. So it ends up going back to uh, daredevil. He's passed out in his bed. And it's basically to the point where he's, like, bloody, beaten everything. Just by, like, some small-time muggers. Like, little burglars, and he's like, damn. And on the news, on the TV, it was like, Daredevil stopped, like, three muggers. Two of them were in for questioning. One of them died from head injury. And you're like, damn. So Daredevil just killed a dude when he wasn't even ready. And so, yeah. That was uh, Daredevil number one. So the name of this arc is, like, No Fear. So that's pretty big. Whoa. All right. Damn. Mm -hmm. (laughs) Dang, killed somebody. See, yeah. this is what happens. Yeah. So, like, what, does it really go into detail, like, what it was that caused him to die from that head trauma? Was it, like, an accident, or was it something that was strictly on Daredevil's hands? No, like, it was straight up Daredevil. Like, it was in the scuffle. Like, they were all, like, jumping Daredevil. Daredevil was on his back. Like, Daredevil mm-hmm. pulls one to the ground, and the dude, like, hits his head when he, like, hits the ground. And, like, Daredevil comes mm. and, like, hits him with a backhand to the chin. So the dude's, like, fucking out. And so, like, Daredevil's, like, because he's, like, just fucking throwing his hands. Because he can't even count how many people there are around him. Like, he's, like, fucking, he's freaking out because yeah. his powers aren't, re- he's not, he's not able to rely on his powers. And so, like, that's basically what killed the guy. But we didn't get, like, his, like, head trauma or anything like that. Like, what it was specifically. Like, I'm assuming, like, the dude just bled out. He hit the back right. of his head on the ground, 
Like, he bled out, and fucking Daredevil's like, I gotta get out of here, and he didn't even notice it. Right. Yeah, so, fucked up. Damn. Yeah, real fucked up. Mm. Like, it had him talking to the pastor uh, as a kid, doing, like, the whole, like, confessional thing. Like, the first time, like, he went out as Daredevil. The pastor, the, like, the priest is basically like, cut the shit, Matt, I know it's you. <laughs> like, don't do this shit. Like, this is fucked up. You can't go out hitting people or hurting people. He so said, you know it's pretty dope. the shit i know it's you yeah so it's pretty cool like i like the fact that uh it dealt with um like charles soul's run dealt a lot with like being a lawyer and mm-hmm. this is dealing more with like his like morality and like is he even doing this to be a hero or is he doing it because he likes to so it's doing a lot of things with like addiction and stuff like that which is why they brought up the pills so that's pretty cool i like this uh i like nice. where this is going it's cool i, I like oh, runs like that like because like um they did this in um arrow or whatever where arrow or oliver queen had to pretty much admit that he likes murdering and killing people and shit in one of the seasons so they so, can be a vigilante again yeah he, yeah or some for whatever reason but like he ultimately just admits that he likes killing and shit like oh, it's I a thing that, that... Like the city oh, no it's just something that comes up in one of the seasons where he ultimately has to admit it Oh, that that he likes killing. Yeah. Oh, it totally makes sense during the crossover why he acted the way that he did then. Which is like, mm-hmm. you're the good guys, Barry. They're good. I'm not good. Because <laughs> he likes <laughs> to kill people. Okay. Yep. All right. Okay. So uh, let's uh, keep up the pace on this one. Who wants to go next? Uh, I did. Uh, I had Green Lantern number four with Morrison, Sharp, and Cliff. Uh, it kind of opens up with this guy who has four arms and a trench coat. He's just like a regular dude, but he just has two extra arms and shit and a beard. Um, he's talking to somebody, and um, he's uh, recounting the tale of the Sun Eaters and how they fought the Green Lantern Corps. There's like three of the Green Lantern Corps. So um, there was a, some event that was going on where the Sun Eaters came in to play and they ate a star and it was going to cause for a certain planet or system to go to ruin. So um, in order to like save the day, Hal Jordan realizes that they have to create another star. So he figures out that it takes two hours in order to create an artificial star. So in the meantime, they are going to have to will like the existence of what is until then. Um, so this guy is just uh, telling this whole story about these three Green Lanterns who are like willing the existence of this planet to this like other being. And this other being has this whole mask and metal shit on, all armored up so you can't really see their face or what's going on. Um, it goes back to the tale. Uh, one of the dudes' name is... Uh, tag rod or some shit some big beastly kind of the green lantern um he ultimately gets like uh fucked up by the sun eater because the sun eater is going after the pure power of his power ring and shit and like tendrils kind of pull it into this like nether realm which is the inside of it and shit yeah, so yeah. the dude's about to die um and then how jordan pulls out how jordan and saves him and shit and comes out with like this whole fleet of like Green Lantern, like sh- airships and our like fucking like planes and everything. So that was kind of cool. Like save the day. That was whatever. Um, I guess after after all is said and done, like how Jordan ends up killing some dude. I didn't see where the actual death was. It was probably one one of the earlier comics. But how Jordan ended up killing some dude, and it was without the Guardians like okay and they were like we're the only ones who can like okay a move like that you can't just be going out and killing people you're bad and people are like how is he bad he saved the day he's the hero and like no you're back and you're killing you didn't listen to us or whatever and the book kind of like wraps up that you're the people were telling you to kill you're killing people you want to kill more or less and it's like who's to say that you're the that that's the bad guy just because you say he's the bad guy your emotions are influencing your decisions or whatever the guardians kind of like really deem but anyway book wraps up where that 
creature or thing and all the metal and the mask and everything it says i know who you are how jordan and two of the arms kind of disappear they're just constructs and shit he's like how did you know it was me and all that shit and it turns out it was like this chick named uh, countess uh what is it belzebeth Countess Belzebeth, which is kind of like a vampiric like creature and type of shit. Hmm. So her and um, I know Grant Morrison like wrote books in like the '80s for DC, so I know he's old. So maybe it's like an old person. Yeah, it's probably like a callback to something. But <laughs> like I was saying to Jen, like there seems to be like a theme that was going on, like vampires and shit. Because I got that in a couple other books, but yeah, it's it's an all right book. I liked it and shit. We see more Hal Jordan doing Hal Jordan Green Lantern shit. That's cool. So that's why you're the best. <laughs> you're, the best. you're the best. They so will be the best. Like, they got everybody else hanging out with the Justice League right now. So. Do things <laughs> that make us believe you're the best. Yeah. yeah. So nigga made a star and beat a sun eater that was eating the entire comic. So. <laughs> nice. That's cool. <laughs> All right. Well, shit. I want to tell you guys about Uncanny X-Men number 11 by Matthew Rosenberg, sorry, uh, Salvador La Roca and uh, Rosenberg's wife, Rochelle Rosenberg. Are you sure that's his wife? I think so. <laughs> you know what? Let me retract that. Rochelle Rosenberg. <laughs> don't know if they're related at all. So let me be correct about Maybe that. relation. <laughs> maybe, maybe not. No relation. <laughs> Peter Griffin. So, <laughs> Scott Lando Griffin, aka Cyclops, is uh-huh. back, and Why? supposedly all the other X Men are dead. So oh, he's geez. just like, I don't believe they're dead. I believe they're out there. <laughs> so I'm gonna go look for them. I believe. Not my X Men. <laughs> I wasn't really dead. So why would they be dead? Exactly. You know, I came back to life twice. And Logan's here, and he's. He doesn't know that yet. Oh, so, uh, geez. I know. Gosh, jeez, this guy. So he's going out and he's just looking for the X Men. You know, trying to live a, a low key life though, because he people still believe he's dead. So then he just goes to the sewer because you know looking for X Men. Where are X Men hiding? Oh, maybe they're in the sewer. So he goes in the sewer. He finds see- Spider Man. <laughs> Meet some just, dude. Like, a lizard in his family. I forgot his name, but the important his thing. Name's Kurt. No plan. No, I I know Nightcrawler's name. Whatever. So <laughs> he goes mm-hmm. to the sewer. He meets this dude, but the important thing is that Chamber is also there, and so oh. Chamber is talking to Scott, and he's like, basically, fuck you, Scott. Damn. You get everyone all mad because you go and pick fights with the Inhubits, you pick fights with the Avengers, you pick fights with regular humans. Like, you get all these people mad and then you die. So now they're just angry at us for no reason because of you. And then, on top of everything. Chamber, Chamber nobody's mad at you. Listen. <laughs> Nobody and then, cares what you're on top doing, of Chamber. everything, your son <laughs> comes back and finishes the job. Good job. So he's like, why are you guys in the sewer? Because this is where we live now. <laughs> Fuck you. Get out of here. So he leaves. Dude, I fucking live here. <laughs> what do you mean? <laughs> like, well, how fucked up is that? It's like, hey, why are you guys even down here? Are you guys hanging out or something? <laughs> like, we live here, you dickhead. Like, warming their hands on trash fires. <laughs> trash fires. <laughs> your- it's yeah, all like your fault too. Shit. It's oh, all your God. fault too. You just show up. Hey, why are you down here? You're the best of us. All right, what happened? So then he leaves, and some girl. He's like back at his place, and then outside his place, he looks outside his window, and there's a girl with a blindfold, and she's getting beat up by people outside. So he's like, I gotta go save the day. So he goes saves the day, and then it's that girl. She can like see the future and see the past. Kind of like uh, that girl from 
Ages of Shield, that little girl uh, that they had to go see. Hey, hey, hey! I need you right here, right now. I need you right here with me, right now. <laughs> so hey, that's basically hey, what's hey, going hey. on with this girl right now. Like she doesn't know what's the present, what's the future, what's the past. She don't know what the fuck is going on. So she's just like, that's that's a useless power. She's like, I have to tell you. She's like, she's like, I have to tell you, Sky. I have to tell you, they're all gonna die. And like she tells him all all kinds of other stuff. Everybody's gonna die. And then she's like, listen. Listen, Sky. Don't do it. Whatever you're, you know what you're about to do. Don't do it. <laughs> so he's oh, like, geez. "Listen, I'm Dude, gonna save us. I'm lady. gonna find the X Men." She's like, "Okay, what an well, asshole. I just had to tell you that, and I'm gonna leave now. Goodbye." So she leaves, and then a couple of days later, like there's a rally, <laughs> and he goes to the rally, and basically the person is like, "Yeah, our initiative is working. The anti mutant vaccine has now been distributed to everybody." Yada yada yada, and all the other <laughs> mutants have either been killed or deported. So <laughs> De- deported, yeah. Jesus. Death or deport. <laughs> Death or deport. Death or deport. And so yeah, whoa. Yeah, everyone in the crowd's like, yeah, woo, humanity for humans. <laughs> <laughs> Humanity, humanity for humans. For humans. Like, who's making these chants? Like, who's this? <laughs> it's like, whoa. <laughs> and so you know, Scott like the goes. bottom one percent out there. <laughs> so Scott goes out there and he's like, hey, what about the Mewen families? What about oh, their geez. kids? What about Good those going, deaths? Scott. What about keep those kids profile, that got Scott. deported and separated from their families? They're like, you, beauty. <laughs> You, beauty, you love mutants. What are you doing here? So they start beating him up. As they should. Mewty so love start beating him up. And they knock oh, off shit. his glasses. <laughs> <laughs> they knock off his glasses. And he's like, hey, my glasses. I can't see. My glasses. He pulls a Velma. <laughs> Oh, jinkies. My glasses. I can't see without my glasses. <laughs> so, and so, you know, he can't keep his eyes closed for too long. So he opens his eyes. Uh-huh. And then, boom, Captain America comes to save the day. And he uses his shield to block it. And then he gets his glasses because his glasses are conveniently unharmed. And so he gives it to him. And he's like, hey, you need to be careful. And he's like, what the hey, fuck? Hey, you need to be careful. He's like, what the fuck? My business is just like before. You like protecting the people that want to kill me. He's like, listen, I'm only here to so, make sure there aren't no incidents. Listen, Scott, I've been through some shit the last couple of years. I don't got time for this shit. Everybody's forgiving Mate, everybody except you. Look, man, you're the only one who can't let it go. <laughs> you're the one getting in fights with Nazis out so, here. He helps Scott to make him leave, and he's like, Scott, why are you even here? Like, this was the, the dumbest idea of all time. And he's like, get out of my way. He's like, get out of my way. And he turns, and he sees mad. a guy. <laughs> he sees a guy with a camera, and he's like, you! <laughs> Will you broadcast this unedited? He's like, uh, yeah, sure, no problem. <laughs> so he's like, you! He's like, camera! <laughs> Point at me, all X Men. If you can hear me, mm-hmm. meet me at this place at this time on this day when the sun beats the moon. I will be there. You can find me. And so everybody else don't. I guess they, <laughs> right. Nobody else. So, I guess he killed his leadership ability. I guess that was the only thing that really died. This dude's just so, out there fucking fucking winging it. It gets to that day, to the time he's there at the place, and no mutants are there. (laughs) It's just all his enemies, like three different groups, and they came in with squads heavy. So there's like 30 people there, right? Like at least. Jesus. At least. And so... They're like, ooh, how's it feel to be finally alone and you're going to be the last X-Men to die? And then uh, you hear a voice that says, he's not alone. And it's Logan and he jumps down. And so they duo and they kill all these people together. And so there's this quiet, silent moment. They look at each other. And then Logan walks away. He's like, so now that we've caught up, let's go. 
nigga. <laughs> Real nigga. Badass. There's also part <laughs> two. <laughs> You've been through some yep. shit. I've been through some shit. All right, let's no, go. it was like a quiet moment. He <laughs> yep. looks at him. Yep. And then he just walks away. No words. You just died. I just died. We both here. We got shit to do. Let's go. Get the book. There's a part two, the which chopper. is Logan's Ooh. version of what he's been doing during that time. Cool. There's a cameo from N- Natalie and Buck. And then also part three is of the blindfolded girl. So you find out why she gets beat up. So get it. It's good. It's getting even better. Wait, what well, Logan's been doing? But we got a whole Return of Wolverine book. We spent like three months doing Hunt for Wolverines. <laughs> what do you mean? There's a backup issue about what Logan's been doing. Why did I spend all that? Okay. It's not a backup. It's what he was doing whilst what Scott In this was doing story. what he was doing. Yeah. Yeah. So basically, the only thing, the last part I need to tell you is that uh, Scott goes and finds Jamie. Actually, correction. Jamie finds Scott, multiple a.k.a. Man. Multiple Man. Because before <laughs> Little Catch-Up and Uncanning in the earlier issues, he was supposed to help out in saving the day. But he was like... Fuck that. So he left and went to go drink. So now that's why he's still there. Hey, Scott. I heard you back. <laughs> it's like, Jesus <laughs> Christ, Jimmy. <laughs> All right, cool. Uh, get shit. it. Get it. Get it. All right. I was going to... Uh, yeah, I'll talk about Immortal Hulk number 13 because I was really hyped about it last time. So we find out that this uh, Immortal Hulk number 13 by uh, Al Ewing and Joe Bennett. So uh, Hulk's in hell. His uh, dad summoned, like, this creature, like, the one below all, this giant green gamma cloud. And what's happening right now? Well, it opens its mouth, and it's shooting out, like, millions and millions of, like, demons. They're just, like, flooding out. (laughs) Not while he's, like, doing this, like, crushing, like, fucking buildings and stuff. So that's weird. Ew. And in all, like, scary movies, it's always, like, some violent (laughs) throw-up. Okay, what? (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> okay but um, so yeah they're in hell the Hulk's like smashing all these like creatures together and stuff but it's like um, he's skinny still he's like a little weak you got the reporter being like I don't know what to do I don't know what to do but we gotta help the Hulk like all these like dead people like the reporter's dad are like we gotta run uh, fucking um, what's his name Rick Jones he turns into his like blue Hulk form that he had for a little bit but he's like getting ripped apart by the millions of like hordes of monsters and stuff so Ooh. you're like whoa what the hell whoa. the Hulk Yikes. is like losing they're all like biting off piece by piece <laughs> of the like, Hulk the and you're like whoa what the fuck they're like ripping these things apart and so you got Crusher, Krill and Puck from Alpha Flight and they just got to the top of the volcano shooting out all the gamma energy and Puck's basically telling Krill a, basically a history lesson and what he knows about Gamma. And he's basically like, Gamma's not a science, like, through and through. Hmm. It's got unpredictabilities. It's kind of like magic. It's the bonding of science and magic that can come into our world. That's why it has some predictable Whoa. nature, but that's why it does things so unpredictably, like make hulks and, and like make these doors and creatures like this. That's why it's like nobody can really tell what it's going to do. Whoa. And so that's you're like, cool. whoa, that's really dope. And so uh, Crusher Krill goes up and he's about to fight like the Hulk's dad because he's like, you're the one that made me do all this. Like, you're the one that started all this. And he's like, you know what? He like takes a breath. He's like, no, I'm not going to do it. So he like t- goes back to normal because he was just all volcanic and stuff like that. He's like, I know how to stop this. He like puts himself into the fucking like gamble volcano and he like absorbs all the energy. And then he dives out and jumps right into the Hulk. And so, like, the Hulk gets supercharged like, gamma energy. And then, like, he's, like, fucking doing the Hulk clap and, like, fucking everything's flying away. Like, uh, Whoa, since he took cool. all that, like, gamma energy, like, the fucking, like, giant creature, the one below all, doesn't have, like, a link anymore. And since, like, they, like, got rid of, like, the dad, the one below all doesn't have a link anymore, so it has to go away. And so everybody's transported back to, like, Earth and everything like that. So you got everybody, like, yo, what the hell? What, how'd we get here? Um... Uh, Everybody's like asking questions. Crusher Krill's back and he's talking to Puck. And Puck is like, hey, you did pretty good. You want to join Alpha Flight? And he's like, yeah, well, only if I can bring my wife. And I'm like, yes, fuck yes. Crusher Krill on like a C rank team. I've been rooting for this guy for fucking years. Like, you got it, man. You got it. Just, he always just keeps on slipping by like those like small little, like he just wants to get a little bit of money to get him and his girl right. 
and he keeps all getting oh and then he went in the black bolt book he was being tortured forever and it was just like god Whoa. damn for like eons and eons in his mind and it's like he's finally getting his win and you're like fuck yeah crusher krill but that's whatever um the big thing is like hulk and like banner are like separate right now and um like the inner monologue was always like Al Ewing talking about gods and demons and stuff like mm-hmm. that. And he said like this thing, like the one below all that he was saying is like the original name for like the demon that destroyed everything. The left hand of God was like some weird old school name. You know what I mean? And it was like, this was the one that destroyed everything with the left hand. And it talks about the right hand is like helping and creating in the mm. loving hand. And like the Hulk is looking down at Banner and Banner's like in the fetal position. It's like, why don't you just do it? I know you want to do it. Just do it. Get rid of me now. And like the Hulk's like looking at him. And it does like that nine panel page thing where he's like, you know, man. Like, I know you're afraid of me. And I know you hate me. And I know I scare you. And I guess that's like, that's just what it is. Like, right. I can't help that. But I just want you to know that when nobody else had your back and nobody else protected you, I was protecting you. And it's because I love you, man. Cause somebody's got to and so he like reaches out his hand and like fucking uh bruce grabs his hand again and they fuse back and you're like whoa what oh right in the fucking feel goods <laughs> you're like right in the fucking feel goods the hulk at his back the whole time what's this feeling that it, what so, is this all the people are like hey wait where the fuck's bruce at where's the hulk at and then um he's like somewhere um it ends um, Betty Ross, mm-hmm. um, you know, his ex-wife, gets a call. She's in California, and she's being monitored right now. But she gets a call. She's in California, and uh, it's like, Betty? And she's like, what? What the hell? It's the middle of the night. Who is this? It's like, Betty, I think I'm ready to come home. And it's like Bruce in like some like phone booth in the middle like of the Midwest, but it's nighttime. So Bruce can be Bruce at night now. So he could probably finally get some sleep. So that's nice. It's still going on because, you know, those people are monitoring his whole family. So he's still got troubles and shit. But it, yeah. it was a nice, like, get him back to basics kind of thing. It's like a feel good, like, okay, who is the Hulk? You know what I mean? This is the Hulk. Here you go. Get mm. started. 2018. So I like it. I love nice. it. Nice. Al Ewing's Hulk. It's still one of the best books I've read in a long time. So nice. Keep on keeping on. All right. Who's next? All right. Cool. So, um, I had the Avengers number 14 with Aaron Marquez. I got a uh, partner in our Seneca. And so it kind of opens up with this dude who is the shadow Colonel. And what he's doing is he and his whole little entourage are breaking into this room or this building rather it's an old school as building an old school as in 15th century 16th century mm, but that's this is name colonel uh a shadow colonel yeah so uh they break in there and they do all this cool like uh Dun, 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 taking out everybody, taking oh, out hordes of layers and shit, being all cool and shit. And then they get into the main room and they break open and there's this big ass coffin in the middle of the room and they open the coffin and then it's empty and they're like, where's Dracula? And then you pan over and you got Blade with these silver fucking nunchucks taking out vampires <laughs> <laughs> Hit him to a white bitch show. <laughs> so <Silver Fuck. nunchucks. laughs> it's, uh, it's like, oh, this is going to be a blade heavy Avengers book. This is what this about. <laughs> it's just 30 pages of that. <laughs> <laughs> so anyway um iron man and black panther and like the bowels of wakanda and there are vampires also over there and they use these huge as like incendiary like like uh, tactics or weaponry and then start firing all these explosives at these vampires cool. and tony tony's like no they're not real they're they're not human they're just monsters they're vampires they're monsters ah, 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 sticks. Ah. and then T'Challa is just like, I failed with each and every death because I was unable to save them. They were humans just like me. And I was like, whoa. 
<laughs> Those guys are two totally different people. <laughs> <laughs> I mourn all your souls. <laughs> I was like, I gotta get out of here. <laughs> and then you, then you pan to like fucking Captain America, and he's outside of a church, making sure everybody's like safe in the church, and he just has his like sword, and he has a crucifix, and then he says, "Hey, you're not gonna be feasting on any of the people in there. You're gonna be feasting on me. So t- come take a bite out of me." If you got the stomach for it, <laughs> and I was like, "Bite out of this guy! You got the stomach for it!" I was like, "Oh shit!" Cat with the one-liners against the vampires. He doesn't give a shit. <laughs> I was like, "Whoa! What happens if the vampires get a load of cat? Like if they gonna become like super vampires or make him a super vampire? I don't know, but it never happens because like fucking Thor's in this air and he's like a god and raining thunder and shit." So there's a lot of shit going down and everything. Like it's Thor happening looks? all over. Hmm? How do you like how Thor looks now? Uh, it's still like the old school kind of Thor, where I think of him from, like um. But he's got like a gold arm. That's not. Uh, no, he doesn't have it in this one. Oh. Or at least I didn't see it. Oh. Or I wasn't paying attention to it. Because Jason Aaron's been writing Thor for the last six years, so. Nah, he's like the way I remember him from just like reading it earlier it's like he's wearing like the norse like armor the kind of like the one from ultimate alliance like the old schoolish kind of one with the helm nah Uh, not that i remember oh maybe you got fixed i have no idea i don't read that book nor do i sounds like a lot um yeah so like after all that shit goes down, they end up going back to, like, I guess it's S.H.I.E.L.D.? I'm not sure. They're holding the Shadow Colonel over there because uh, <laughs> he turned himself in. He was just like, yeah, whatever. And, um... <laughs> you know whatever. everywhere, right? Right. right. The jail cell, see what happens. <laughs> like, he's like, I That's don't care. Yeah, he, <laughs> he's he's a woo-woo, you got me. So, like... <laughs> Big whoop, that's all you got? <laughs> so they were like, who do we send in there? Who's going to interrogate him? And then it was like some fucking Joker Batman. And there's Blade. Hey, I got some words for you. So then they like kind of back and forth. But like Blade's coming unhinged because he's striking at all his like emotional blows. He says, you're not even human. You're not even a vampire. Your mother was a bastard. They killed your mother while you were born, and that's why you're a hassle. You don't know where you belong. They'll never accept you. No way you'll be an Avenger. He's like, you keep running your mouth, and I'll be the end of you. He's like, you want me to stop talking? I thought this was an interrogation. <laughs> 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 oh, 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 <laughs> oh, my God. Oh, he's coming on in. He's coming <laughs> He's going on in. I was like, oh shit. The cap and everybody was on the hey, other hey, side. Hey, 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 Cap was like, I bet he won't say that shit to me, though. <laughs> <laughs> cap and everybody was like, hey, he's too emotionally compromised. I think we need to, to cut me. this out. <laughs> and, and, as, and as that's going down, like, fucking, they trend. Uh, story like transports to fucking the borders of the USSR, and it's the Winter Vanguard, it's the right dude in red. Uh, who looks like the Captain America. Uh, I forget what his name is. And then the chick. And they're just on guard duty. And they see the fucking Dracula there. He said, like, yeah, I'm a refugee of war. I don't have my own nation or place anymore. It's just me. And I'm seeding refuge within your capital with, with the amnesty and all this bullshit. So now they have to deal with Dracula and the USSR <laughs> or Russia. So that's how it ends, and I'm like, whoa, uh, there's think, a lot of shit going that on. I uh, stretches out to uh, vampire creatures. I th- I'm pretty sure that's a human policy. I'm pretty yeah. sure you can't uh, just yeah. be like, look, I lost all my vampires. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, need- <laughs> I guess it was a sovereign nation, so it was recognized. Who has to fill that paperwork out? I don't know, but I guess they got it in early. Since they're like <laughs> really old. <laughs> like, I fucking hate my job. <laughs> Damn. Well, shit, was that the end? Yeah. Okay, like, so, okay, well, shit, they're got vampire problems. And yeah. Russian problems. And Namor mm-hmm. problems. They've been having vampire problems since the beginning. And they still have celestial problems. Yeah. Damn. <laughs> And Blade doesn't know where he fits in. 
He's really insecure about being an Avenger. They didn't mention the daughter. Just mentioned that hey, he's not an Avenger. Back, um, he's he's back, not anything. Um, after Secret Wars, Blade's daughter was supposed to get a book written by David F. Walker, hmm. but uh, they never made it. Yeah, the David hmm. F. Walker is this guy who was supposed to write Miles, but he didn't do that. He's supposed to write that Blade Girl book. He didn't do that. He's supposed to write Riri, couldn't do that. He went over to DC, and then uh, they kept on like tossing him around on like BS projects. And now he's making his own comic, uh, mm-hmm. like comic. Uh, what's it called? Like publishing brand hmm. like his own company comic company he's like okay i'm realizing yeah. that this part is not my jam he's the guy that wrote that uh, power man and iron fist book that i liked a lot he's cool mm-hmm. but to circle back to what you said of course blade's gonna be insecure when he's back on that team do you know who's on that team All right now <laughs> you got the power hitters like, nigga you got he Captain got Marvel, you got Namor. he got Owned in that interrogation room. Told that nigga to stop talking. <laughs> oh wait, no, Blake can go out in the day. He's a daywalker. Yeah, he a daywalker. Yeah, I was about to say, like, fuck you. You got all these like superpower people, it, like you. And you can't even go in half the time. <laughs> so you gonna be out there overcompensating <laughs> at nighttime? It's like, oh, is this a night mission? <laughs> Yeah, but it's like, like look, man, if you can't mission, handle, you can't, you can't uh, handle interrogation rooms with other people watching you and the guy <laughs> be powered. There's no way you're going on missions with us. Yeah, this is from 4 a.m. to 11, so you can't <laughs> go with this one. <laughs> this sun's supposed to be out. But early I got my super today. nunchucks. Like you know that yeah. doesn't work on rocks, right? <laughs> <laughs> we're fighting the thing. You know that, right? <laughs> Wait, we're tarnish. fighting the thing? Yeah, we're fighting, and the torch. <laughs> well, you got a problem so. with fire? <laughs> so dumb. All right, well, yeah, I mean, Blade's cool. I hope he brings out, like, a fucking katana or something like that. He does a whole bunch of cool shit. He was pretty masterful with the nunchucks. <laughs> nice. All right, so for my last real. book uh, for the week Whoa, is Batman. You right, Jen. Oh, you didn't... Don't yeah, it's your turn. Because I want to tell you about X23 and how Honey Badger just loves picking up randos. X Assassin Part 3. What number is this? Nine. Number nine. Written by Tamaki, Olo Tegue, and Wang, Mayer, and Hannah mm-hmm. did, were the anchors. So three anchors. But basically, they got a robot that looks okay. like them. All and right. they brought it back to the lab, and Beast is there. Gosh. And Beast just his job is just to tell you about the robot. And so basically, the okay. robot was made with some of Laura's DNA, but it was broken, so it's not full. So that's why she's a robot, I guess, and not full clone. But whatever. So, Chris, don't you hate Beast? <laughs> I, I fucking hate Beast because Beast Beast is the person who's clearly like the Hank Pym of the X Men, but always acts like he's not the Hank Pym of the X Men. He's like the guy mm-hmm. who knows he's a plot device, but won't ever invent a plot device so that people will still need him. He's like, I know how to fix this, and I can fix it, but I need you to ask me. And I could fix it, over. but if I fix it without you asking me. I won't be powerful. I fixed it for people. I fixed stuff for people before, and they haven't said thank you. So you need so to say I you need to ask ask me thank you before I fix it, because that way I know that my you therapist says, "Henry, you give too much." So I'm not giving no more. <laughs> All right, what happens? So, yeah, he just tells him about the robot, and then Laura leaves to go do some detective stuff. And then, so she, like, basically ends up, like, at this, like, medical center. And it's supposed to be, like, you know, like, popping. Like, they're making a lot of money. Like, their stocks went up kind of shit, like, kind of thing. So, but nobody's there. And it's dark. And, like, the lights are off. You know how, like, it, it's, like, in the evening time, so half the lights are off? And then, oh, man. It's like, what the heck is going on here? And so, mm-hmm. meanwhile, Gabby lost her phone. Meanwhile. Jesus. <laughs> Yeah, meanwhile, back at the Institute, Gabby lost her phone. And then, so she goes... It's on the side of her bed. uh, I don't know. (laughs) I think the robot took it. But uh, (laughs) she gets a shirt 
<laughs> from her room and then she goes and then the robot's gone so she freaks out and goes searches for the robot and uh she opens this like door is the and robot as like, tall as her or is it no it's like tall as, as tall as laura okay and so she opens the gabby opens this door and then there's a cow mutant there's like this other two boy mutants and they're playing like a magic game and so she's like, have you guys seen a robot that kind of looks like me, but not really like me? And the two boys said no, and the cow said moo, and then the translation said no in cow language. And so she's like, thanks, <laughs> bye. So she leaves, goes to the roof, finds the robot. She's like, here, I got you a shirt, just in case you don't want to be like robot naked, or you don't want to be called a robot. Maybe you got a name. But yeah, anyways, uh, what are you doing up here? And then she like, takes out her blade and points it at Gabby. She's like, whoa, cool blade. You you know you don't got to kill me. We look like each other. <laughs> you can use that one finger like, just push it out of the way. Yes, so. <laughs> yeah, so anyway. <laughs> you know. About that. <laughs> it's like, ting. She's like, you know. You don't have to kill people. You could be a good guy. I understand. I used to kill people. And Laura oh, understands geez. too. She used to kill people too, but now we're good guys. So, you know, you could be a good guy with us too. And so then Gabby gets a call from Laura and Laura's like, yo, I need you to come over here right away. Cause Laura like opened this like door and she found all these robots. So she's like, oh shit, I'm going to need back. This, yeah, <laughs> so no. Gabby's like, okay, we are on the way. She's like, Wait, we? She's like, yeah, me and the robot. And the robot's wearing the shirt. So, the robot doesn't She's entertaining it. Gabby so, picks up strays. That's her thing. Gabby she picked picks up, up a strays. Fuck it. She picked up a honey badger. No, she picked up a wolverine. It's a wolverine. Oh, my God. Yeah. Well, actually, that was a gift from Squirrel Girl. Yeah. Yeah. But still, they kept it. His name's Jeez. Jonathan. They named it? <laughs> He's their pet. <laughs> He oh, stays at the house. <laughs> oh, geez, that was never gonna leave. His name's <laughs> I'm never gonna give it up. And She's gonna grow a test. Is already very agile because someone tried to oh, break into their house one time, and Jonathan took a shot to the belly like a beast. And because lives. he thinks he lives there. <laughs> he, thinks, he, lives, he thinks he has something to protect there. <laughs> yeah. Okay. So I get Gabby is supposed to be there. So Lord isn't alone like Wolverine was alone so yeah. you can see her make different decisions but I want uh, was this new but robot for Gabby? She's <laughs> not making different decisions like she's leaving on her motorcycle like Logan leaves on his motorcycle and she and Gabby even says this she's like oh you're but, leaving yeah. by yourself and she's like yeah yeah but, but I'll that's, be back. that's how we can have like a because you know Laura doesn't have a Kitty Pride, Laura, uh, Psylocke, Jubilee kind of person. Yeah. So that's who Gabby is. But uh, what's this robot supposed to do? Is this supposed to teach Gabby some kind of lesson? Like quit, I don't know. So basically, I only remember in part one, because I missed part two. Um, Why in are part... you robots in the house? Well... What like I said in part one they went on this mission and it was the robot like trying to do it that's why she said you don't gotta kill people because the robot was killing people and so they stopped the robot and then they took the robot so yeah they got the robot when do you unplug the robot am I right okay what was your last all right, my last book is uh, Batman number 64. So this one is written by Joshua Williamson, the Flash writer. The guy's written like the last 64 issues of Flash. <laughs> so they're doing another crossover with the Batman and Flash. Ever since DC Rebirth, they've been really pushing the fact that Batman and Flash have known each other and been hanging out a lot longer than they have. So they do little like notes in this book. Like they have a flashback with like, Remember when we used to hang out all the time with Kid Flash right. and Robin? Yeah, you know, so like, when did this happen? Dude, uh, dude like, release uh, the comic with that, right? <laughs> and uh, and uh, like the Flash runs up, he's like, "I'm surprised I started you, Batman. I remember you said once that when I would run up, you could feel the static cling pull on your cape." I'm like, whoa, what? <laughs> and number two, hey, that's how you say hi to people. <laughs> okay, <laughs> but um, what's happening is uh, Wally West is dead. The of ginger one was is. dead. He died in Heroes and Heroes in Crisis. Mm -hmm. That uh, 
mini series that's going on, that event that's going on. Um, it's basically like they're all in like a like a Batman made a a building that they all go to for therapy. Uh, the building went crazy and it's like killing people. Batman's like trying to do an autopsy. Like Smart like, House. Yeah, like Smart House from Disney Channel. Nice. So, uh, what's happening is like it starts with like fucking uh, Batman's like doing an autopsy on like Wally's body. He's like, God damn it, basically. Well, why is he doing it? <laughs> he's, he's That's a, my question. He's, the he's Batman. On the team. Yeah, he's Batman. Yeah, he's, man. yeah, he's the doctor. Um, he's the doctor and detective. Him and Flash are the he, detectives. That's also what they're doing. They're also being like, look, him and Flash are the detectives. So, uh, is Batman the bad cop? Yeah, he's the bad cop. Flash is the good cop in like this buddy thing. Batman's always a bad cop. What? Oh, uh, okay. So yeah. like, the Justice League is he's on a mission, and like uh, Batman's real short with everybody, and yeah. he's like, like he's kind of losing it, getting a little distracted and stuff because he's getting tired again, which he's been doing a lot in Tom King's run, like getting real tired and worn out. Mm-hmm. Uh, in the Flash, you're a human. Is, yeah, the Flash mm-hmm. is mad too because it's like they still haven't figured out why Wally died. So both of them are like real mad. Mm-hmm. So everybody in Justice League is like, leave them alone. And so Flash is like, all right, I'm out. Batman's like, all right, I'm out. Gotham Girl from the first arc in this Batman run by Tom King is back. And she's been doing nice. like small, like, destructive acts in, like, local areas. Uh-huh. This one's in Good Central luck. City. Batman gets there before Flash. Flash is like, how'd you get here before me? And Batman's like, oh, oh, I got the Justice League emergency. And he's like, cut the shit. I'm tired of your lies, man. What happened? Batman's basically like, all right, this is what happened. I trained some people a little while ago after they got powers, kind of like Superman. The more they use their powers, the quicker they'll die. This girl, Gotham Girl, she started just doing these small acts, but now she's doing stuff like she tore down the Flash Museum and almost killed people. Like She was like throwing pillars down and stuff. And so uh, he's like, obviously, they're getting worse. And so it goes back to Gotham Girl, and it's like that spotlight thing where they do it. It's like real creepy stuff. She's like, look, I did it. Even the Flash is in. And now we can really be heroes. We'll all be superheroes. Ha, 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 ha. She's like laughing and stuff. And it shows her brother, Gotham, like fucking strapped up to like some tubes and stuff like that. And she's like keeping the body alive like with like tubes and like nourishment and things like that. So uh, she's freaking out. <laughs> He's uh, going to come back and like fuck people up. Batman's still Shoot. losing it because, like, he's losing sleep and stuff. They're dealing with heroes in crisis, like, that house and stuff, and, like, dealing with, like, the people that are dying. Wally's dealing with, like, Iris hate <coughs> um, everything that's been going on in Joshua Williamson's run. So, uh, this is a four-part series. <clears throat> All the stuff that's happened in Batman's going to pick up at 66. So, I'm guessing it's going to be this week, 64, uh, Flash 64, Batman 65, Flash 65. And that's how the series will go. So just like the button, if anybody wants to go pick them up. Um, but yeah, I think I'm I'm be reading You're this gonna one. Do it? Yeah, I fucking love these Batman Flash books. And some people don't like Tom King's books, but I think I like them. I like them. Like I like the first three arcs. I like this arc. I really like the stuff that they did last time with like the guy Professor Pig or something. He was like, <laughs> he had like Batman up like a pig and was like cutting his stomach and stuff. And Batman was having oh. nightmares and freaking out. I'm like, yeah, cool. Yeah. Yeah. Batman deserves some demons too. Yeah, so that was like the arc that this one's gonna continue with at, at sixty six. So I think I'm gonna actually go back and buy that stuff. Heroes in Crisis is also written by Tom King, so I think I might buy that in trade. Nice. But now I'm just like ranting. So, um, yeah, but I did like it. Batman sixty four. I say get it. Cool, Chris. Did you have a last Joshua book? Williamson? A third book? I kept saying Tom King, but Joshua Williamson wrote it. Oh, Joshua Williamson, the Flash writer. Uh, yeah, I had Tony Stark Iron Man 8 written by Slot with Sh- Shitty and Delgado. So, uh, opens up with the Winter Guard in Russia, and they're under attack by these humans and everything. And these humans are laced with are military. The from the Avengers book? Yep. Okay. Yeah, it's like, <laughs> like all my books. Yeah. <laughs> All my books are like tied together. It's weird. <laughs> like the first two are vampires, and the last two have to do with Winter Guard. So whatever. Anyway, so like with the Winter Guard and this one, they're like protecting Mother Russia and all that shit, and all the citizens and shit because they're under attack by these guys with military grade weapon tech. And these people also have these Iron Man masks. And when I say Iron Man masks, I mean like Iron Man from Iron Man Two, where Peter Parker puts up his hand and shit and tries to stop the thing. 
they have one of those they have that kind of mask on because that kind of mask has this brain or neural interface that allows them to get into escape which is the electronic escape where they have their virtual reality and shit and they're all playing video games right now and they don't realize what they're really doing so they're out wreaking havoc and shit and this is going on all over the world um <clears throat> and this is being done by this villain named uh controller and controller basically has this ability to leech off of others psychically and turn that into physical power so oh, and he's in it he's in the internet mindscape mm -hmm. okay. so Solid. he's so he's draining all these people and everything while they're playing this game that's linked up on online like Corey's saying and um he's they're ter equating it to a game so he's essentially the final boss so it's iron man and jenna van dyme who are out flying around doing yeah. what they have to do and they realize that they have to go to the source to stop it the source is the final boss which is this dude who siphons off psychically and he's this huge ass juggernaut type of dude now and he's wreaking havoc and whooping ass and shit so um as this is going on um tony's ai is like reacting to what's happening and he's getting his ass kicked and shit and it's friday is not acting like friday anymore it's actually acting like motherboard and motherboard is some other ai that tony must have engineered at some other time in an earlier run probably within this one i'm at number eight but um it's essentially his mother on the interface and oh, no, um, no. She, she jumped in like his mom is actually out there she's actually in there dang crazy so she brings him into like the virtual reality while he's getting his ass whooped by um <laughs> the dude so so now he's in there and while he's in there he's in there in his most perfect form and has the most perfect life that he could ever want and shit and his mom is there and this girl named like amanda armstrong from the real world is there she got brought in by motherboard so she's like tony's gonna yeah i'm amanda armstrong no i'm asking her because she watches the real world is that a real no. real world person? no no there is an amanda but her last name is not armstrong but essentially meta was like when tony gets in here she's gonna recognize he's gonna not recognize me we're gonna break out and motherboard's like this is his perfect world that he always wanted that's not gonna happen so tony arrives wow. in an old ass suit and when i say old ass i mean like an old ass comic suit so we had the iron man with the pointy type of visor shit and everything it was like an old iron man suit wow. and he takes it off and he's like super handsome and shit and his dad's like hey son you deserve a drink after that how about one he's like don't mind if i do and he just starts drinking like a he's cocktail like, and shit with I'm his not, mom he's like i'm not breaking my alcoholic shit if i'm drinking in here <laughs> and it ends with that. Yeah, i'm drinking with my dad uh, like, yeah tony, hey mom tony tony so how the ma classes with carol danvers doing <laughs> yeah and amanda's like tony no so yeah, her, him and he and Danvers are uh, each other's sponsors for uh, AA. But yeah, <laughs> Tony's mom, his real mom, was like some ex rock star, and then uh, like Howard Stark and whatever Lady Stark are just like adopted. <coughs> Found that out a little while ago. Damn. Oh yeah, me too. On that I got show. a question. This is written by the same thing, our same guy Dan Slott, who wrote uh, mm -hmm. Fantastic Four. Can you tell? Mm. I mean, sort of, like, in how they, like, deal with, like, technology and how they, like, relate it. Not really by, like, the overall stories, because I'm not as familiar with the writer, but just in how they were dealing with tech, it kind of seemed familiar. Yeah. Like, the way he was, like, talking about it and stuff. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I was going to say, I was like, is this any better now that he doesn't have to, like, force feed Spider-Man in it? <laughs> yeah, I mean, I mean it, 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 it seemed like, a, it just it seemed, like mainly Spider Man stuff. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it just seemed like an organic story that just seemed like I would have liked to have picked it up earlier in the run. Yeah, like it seems interesting. Good. So, like, yeah, he made his like internet scape where he's obviously selling to people where they could be the best of themselves. Mm -hmm. And he also, mm -hmm. uh, I guess, like these robots that are always hanging out, 
Mm-hmm. There was, they had their own personal robot bar where they're like, well, people don't let us in their bars. And so they got their own robot bar. And so uh, mm-hmm. I guess that's where he got the whole internet idea for the scape is because that's where the robots had it, up. And it has like real extremist vibes, but it's not like that type of Tony Stark. Or at least it seems not to be that kind of Tony Stark. It, it just cool. uses the extremist premise, so to speak. Remix and recycle. Okay. That is nice. All right, your turn. Last book. My last book was Champions Number Two by Zub Cummings and Menis. So in the last issue, remember I told you they went on this mission and it was kind of like from Miss Marvel's point of view mm-hmm. and how she's saying how like she brought all these new people in to expand the team. And then they went on this mission and then they came back and I was like, we didn't see what happened, but they won. So <laughs> number two tells you what happened on the mission. And so oh, basically we open up with Sam Alexander. He's the pilot and he's oh, just geez. all sad because he doesn't have any more powers. And he's like, I'm basically now sidelined with the mask guy. We're not making any movies about Nova. <laughs> so I'm just sad because I'm, but I should be grateful because I'm safe in the bunker. But he's still oh, like bummed because he can't go on. What's missions. the bunker? Like the toy chest they put on? Well, they have, they well, <laughs> the champion is like a howdy. spaceship bunker That's called like on shield. <laughs> They live on a spaceship bunker, like on S.H.I.E.L.D. Oh. So, they have, like, That's also a fun. ship. So, they, so yeah. So, he's just there. And then it goes to Miss Marvel's team. And so, they're there fighting this, like, electric-type uh, monster. And so, Braun's job is to do his science thing and make their device work so they can right. defeat the monster. And everyone else has to either evacuate the people and make sure they're safe or fight the monster to distract him and so viv vision and miles were like on uh evacuation duty and so miles like got beat up and he's like oh we're getting our asses whooped and he like gets knocked over looks over to his right sees a girl with like these bracelets and he's like, oh, I'll save you. So, <laughs> Wonder like, Woman? <laughs> yeah, so he saves her. Everything's good. She's like, oh, you're such a good guy kind of thing. Like, thank you for saving me. Yada, yada, yada. Then Viv goes. Oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> so then they're like, Miss Marvel's like, Viv, go check on Braun. And so Viv goes, checks on Braun. And she's like halfway through this like rock wall when she gets zapped by the electric monster. And so she dies instantly right there. Jeez. <laughs> and so Bron's Insta like, death. Bron's like, no, Viv. And we so, just brought her back. They it's, kill Viv a lot. Viv dies a lot. Well, cause she's not really Viv's like, kidding. So anyways, <laughs> they go and then they basically lose and Zach's like hit, the electric monster hits this building and it crashes down, kills like? Miss Marvel, just like this big, huge electric. And so it's just, you just see like yellow everywhere. It's just like yellow and like jagged lines. And what just, the fuck's Braun supposed to do? <laughs> Get to the hole. Just punch electric shit. <laughs> just punch it until we figure something out. <laughs> and so. <laughs> Viv Vision dies, Miss Marvel dies, and all these other people die from like the collapse of this building. And so Miles and Braun are there and they're like, no! And like Miles has this like flashback of him and Miss Marvel and how they first joined the Avengers. And they're like, yeah, we're Avengers. And he's like, yeah, this is cool. And then Braun has this flashback of him and Viv when they first like kiss. And then Viv's like, well, I'm not trying to hurt your feelings because like Viv oh, realized man. that she doesn't like him. So of course she, she don't. like told him and he's like, it's okay. I'm just glad that we're still friends kind of thing. Oh. And, like, and so... Oh uh, yeah, and Cheesy. then the devil shows up, and they're like, "Oh, what do we do?" He's like, "You know, I can help you." It's Mephisto. Yeah, it's Mephisto. They're like, "What's your name?" He's like, "Well, Mephisto sounds like a name that you could grasp, so just call me that." <laughs> so, <Okay>. yeah. <laughs> it's just, what's your name? <laughs> <laughs> Hey, like when they joined the Avengers, like when they first joined the Avengers, mm-hmm. it was after Secret Wars, and it was when like none of the heroes. It was right before Civil War Two, so none of the heroes were getting along, 
And so Tony is like, well, I need some Avengers. So he starts picking up kids. He picks like Kamala and like uh, Nadia, the Vision and Miles and stuff like that. And he just starts fucking around with kids and stuff. And everybody's like, Tony, <laughs> come on, Tony. <laughs> kids, Tony. <laughs> Get it together, Tony. Exactly. Right? That's exactly what they're doing. Exactly. Fuck you, Carol. And so, <laughs> Get a bottle. So Mephisto basically tells them all calmly that he can rewind time and put them like right before they lose and, you know, save the day. And Miles is like crying and Broad's crying and uh, Miles is like, I think we should do this. And Bron's like, no, we can't do that. He's like, yeah, we have to. And you know how to do it now, right? So, like, you won't take as long. Kind of, like, hinting, like, this is all your fucking fault, Bron, because you took too long with the device, and that's why everyone died. But now you know how to do it really quick. So if we just go back in time, you do it real fast, and then we win. And so... <laughs> Miles is like, do it. And so <laughs> Mephisto does it. They win. Mar Miss Marvel, everyone, you know, survives, blah, blah, blah. But the book closes out with the girl that he originally saved with all the nice bracelets. She ends up dying. Uh, yeah. So just like some no. random person died. So that's what it's that justified like him talking all that. That's why Braun's mad because he talked all that shit. We need brains, not brawn, asshole. Well, <laughs> I think because he's like so happy that, you know, Miss Marvel's still alive and things like that. Uh, I don't think he knows that that girl died. But I think it's like nice as like the writer to show like just because you go back in time and fix things. Like, people were meant to die that day. So, people were still going to die <laughs> that day, regardless <laughs> if you went back in time or not. Look, so, if that I want just basically to die shows in my you. Book, I'm going to kill them. <laughs> you are just like Barry. You are just like the Flash. You just go back in time for selfish reasons. Not you know, I feel like Mephisto just knows this and just watches and gets entertainment out of watching. 100%. He's like, I know what do. He's like hey, let me knock you down a couple steps. I heard you got a movie. I heard you got like a nice book and stuff like that. Let me knock you down a couple steps before you start thinking you're too damn good. So yeah, that's why they not. were all like moody and stuff and like went off on Sam in the first book. Because oh, Sam was like, why weren't you guys talking to me? Why weren't you telling me? I could have gotten back up. They're like, shut up, Sam. Oh. Shut up. Get Jeez. out of my way. You don't even have powers. He's like, Miles, you can't kick me out of my room. Slam. Damn. <laughs> Disrespect. Get it. Champions is so good. <laughs> I like Champions. Yeah, you do like team books. I love team books. I love team books because that's how you really see like mm -hmm. where people stand and why they like like are on the sides that they are on. Yeah. A like, real sense of like dynamic and stuff and like pathos. Yeah, you're like, okay, like what's this guy got? <laughs> and people start having random problems with each other. <laughs> <laughs> because it's like we're with each other all the time we live with each other we work with each other it's like some of us are still going through pre-beauty and it it's just like some of us just lost our powers <laughs> I was gonna some say of that. us just some of us don't have power some of us are useless some of us fly the ship when it's a robot shit <laughs> some of us are robots but we think we have feelings for female humans uh, uh, Jesus <laughs> So much shit so going on. Humans, not knowing if we like boy humans or girl humans. Oh, oh Lord. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, that's that's uh, Champions number two. And that's actually <laughs> the last book of the week. So if you do like comics, you like all this kind of shit, follow us at YouTube. Or on YouTube at Long Story Short Show, or you can follow us on that purple channel at S Squad Up. E S Q U A D U P. We got all your weekly comic intake and we got some more stuff for you. So check it out. We'd like for that. So uh, until next week, we'll catch you later. Peace. Oh, yeah. And we're going to play some Far Honor now. So, yeah. Or at least I will. Nice. <laughs>